First step when you meditate is to get your body into position. Your right leg on top of your left, your hands in your lap, right hand on top of your left. Sit up straight, look straight ahead of you, and then close your eyes. That's the body in position. The next step is to get the mind in position. First start with thoughts of goodwill, because that's why we're here. Goodwill is the wish for happiness, both for your own happiness and for the happiness of everybody else. And this is what we're working on as we meditate. We're taking that wish and we're working on it. Looking for a way to bring true happiness to ourselves and true happiness to the people around us. So spread thoughts of goodwill first to yourself and then out in ever-widening circles. People you who are close to your heart, people you know well and like, people you're more neutral about, and even people you don't like. Don't let there be any limitation on your goodwill, because that's a limitation on your, your own mind, on your own happiness. At the same time, think about it. If everyone in the world could find true happiness, the world would be a much better place. And then spread thoughts of goodwill to people you don't even know, and not just people, all living beings of all kinds, east, west, north, south, above and below, out to infinity. May we all find true happiness. Then the next step is to bring your awareness back to the present moment. What have you got here? You've got the body sitting here breathing, and you've got the mind that's thinking and aware. So you bring all those things together. Think about the breath. And then be alert to the breath. What's the breath doing right now? Is it coming in? Is it going out? Where do you sense it coming in? Where do you sense it going out? For the time being, just put aside any preconceived notions you may have about where the breath comes in and where it goes out. Just notice how it actually feels. Because breathing is not just air coming in out of the lungs. It's a whole process by which the body brings the air in and expels the air. And that's not just a matter of the nose and the lungs. The entire nervous system can be involved. different parts of the body expand and contract to bring in that air. That's all counted as part of the breathing process. So wherever you're most aware of the breathing process, focus your attention there. And try to make that spot comfortable. You can do it by adjusting the length of the breath, the depth of the breath, whether it's fast or slow, heavy or light. Whatever ways you have of adjusting the breath so that your sensation of the breathing feels good, that's getting the mind in position. Now the problem with both the body and the mind in position is how to keep them there. It's not that difficult to get them into position, but to keep them there, that's a little bit more difficult. And particularly the mind, because the mind is so used to running around. The body could sit here perfectly still. And in the course of five minutes, the mind could be have gone around the world many, many times. So this is the point you have to focus on most. In fact, all the real issues are in the mind, even when there's pain in the body. The body itself doesn't really object to the pain, doesn't mind. It's the mind that gets upset by the pain. So we have to work mainly with the mind here. If you find that it wanders off, just bring it right back. 
wanders off again, bring it back again. Try not to get frustrated with it, try not to get discouraged. As it's so used to wandering, it's accepted as normal. The mind is going to wander. Your duty right now is to catch it as quickly as you can and to bring it back. And bring it back without a lot of recrimination. Just gently bring it back to the breath and try to make the breath as comfortable as possible. The more comfortable it is, the less likely the mind will be to wander off. In fact, if you get the breath really comfortable, you find it really absorbing, exploring where in the body you feel the different parts of the breathing sensations, the breathing process, which parts of the body feel tense. If you want, you can make a survey of all the whole body, starting from the top of the head on down, or starting at the navel and going up the front of the body, then down the back, out the legs, the beginning again at the back of the neck, go out the arms. Just survey how the different parts of the body are or are not involved in the breathing process, where you feel tension related to the breath. If you feel any tension anywhere, let it relax, let it dissolve away. This way you make the breathing a lot more interesting. And then choose whichever part of the body you want to settle down with and settle down there. As for pains, at this stage of the game, you don't have to focus on them yet. If there's a pain in the leg, just let it be in the leg. You don't have to be down there in the leg with it. You can stay in any other part of the body where the breathing feels comfortable. That's your choice. And be careful not to tense up around the pain. Think of the breath, as I said, as a whole body process, and the breathing, and once it's comfortable, it can go through all the nerves and just go right through any pain there may be. So you don't compound the pain by tensing up around it. So try to develop a sense of wanting to be here, liking to be here. Try to make the breath your friend. Many times when you're meditating and things don't seem to be going well, it's as if the object of your meditation becomes your enemy. It's the hardest thing to focus on, and it seems to want to slip away. Well, that's not the case at all. That's your own misperception. If you make friends with the breath, it's a lot easier to stay here. Being friends means, one, trying to sense as precisely as possible what it really feels like, as opposed to your preconceived notions of what it should feel like, or where you should feel it. In other words, listen to the breath. And then secondly, allow the breath to get more comfortable. And basic principles in establishing any kind of friendship. Listen to the other person, allow the other person to feel at ease and at home. And you soon you find that that other person starts opening up. Same with the breath. The breath energy in the body has lots to offer. There's, even speaking on just the physical side, it can relieve a lot of stress problems, a lot of diseases associated with stress. On the mental side, the breath can create a sense of ease and belonging here in the present moment. So it feels good to be right here, just breathing in, breathing out. When you get more friendly with the breath, it, the breath becomes your friend. Then you're more inclined to want to stay. To see what you can learn from the breath. That's the first step in having the meditation go well. They call it, there are actually four steps altogether. And Maybe not thinking of them as steps, but four component factors in the mental attitude you should have towards the meditation to make it go well. The first one is just simply the desire to do it, wanting to do it, being inclined to do it. If you find that your mind is not inclined, step back and reason with it. Think of the importance of training the mind. 
here it is, the major factor in your life. And if it's untrained, it's like giving your car over to a crazy person to drive. Drive. You have no idea where the crazy person is going to take that car. When he's going to run off the road, run into somebody. Because you have no control over it. It's the same with your mind. Here is the mind that shapes your life. And if you have no control over it, you don't know where it's going to take you. And so what we're doing as we're meditating is developing a measure of control. And not the sort of control of control freaks, but someone who's intelligent and knowing how to administer and manage things so that the mind feels happy to do what you see really should be done. That requires mindfulness, it requires alertness, and those are precisely the qualities we're developing as we meditate. The mind is the chief producer of all the happiness and suffering we experience in the world. That's why when the Buddha gave his first sermon, the passage we chanted just now, he starts out with the issue of suffering. That, he said, is the big problem in life. And it's to be solved right here in the mind in the present moment, because the suffering isn't something that comes from outside. The real problem in life is the suffering that comes from craving. And you can't work on craving until you're mindful and alert. Have the steady concentration where you can really look at it to see it in action. So those are the qualities we're developing as we meditate. Mindfulness, alertness, concentration, the ability to see things clearly because the mind grows more still. So even though we haven't quite gotten there yet in our meditation, at least we're working in that direction. Once you have a sense of the desire to meditate, the next step is just to stick with it. Persistence is the second quality. Just keep at it. The mind slips off, bring it back. Slips off again, bring it back again. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged. Remember that if you this is a task that nobody else can do for you. We suffer in life because of our own lack of skill in dealing with sights and sounds and smells and tastes and ideas that come our way. And because it's our own lack of skill, we have to overcome that lack by developing more skillfulness in how we manage our minds. So if we don't do it now, when is it going to get done? You're going to wait till you're older? That doesn't help. For the one hand, even if you do survive, the mind gets more and more difficult to train the older you get. And then, of course, there's a question of whether or not you're going to survive that long. You've got the opportunity now, so stick with it. Make the most of it. That's persistence. Third quality is intentness. In other words, really focusing on what you're doing, giving it your full attention. In the case of the breath, that means noticing when it's too long, when it's too short. The more careful your attention, the more sensitive you are, the more you start to see here. Also try to be attentive to the mind. Pay attention to what kind of breathing really helps the mind settle down, what kind of breathing doesn't. Once you notice that, you can make changes. In other words, be observant. Watch carefully what's happening and make adjustments. The more sensitive you are to what's going on, the more you're going to see. And at the same time, the more the mind, is willing, mind will be willing to settle down. Fourth quality is the one that's most difficult to translate, and 
covers the mind's ability to discern, its ability to be ingenious. In other words, all the qualities of active intelligence. If you see that something is not working in your meditation, use your imagination to figure out another way. In other words, you could make the mind, make the breath deeper, you could make it more shallow, you could make it come in, in and out different spots in the body. There's lots to play around with here. In other words, when things aren't working out, try to figure out something, another way of approaching the breath, another way of approaching the present moment, so that things will work better. Sometimes you have to use auxiliary meditation topics to help you. If you find that you're having a problem with anger, work on goodwill and equanimity. There are meditation topics that help foster those qualities. If you're having a problem with lust and desire, there contemplate the body in terms of its parts. Notice that when you're attracted to a body, it's not the whole body you're attracted to, it's only certain parts. If you were, if you took the whole body into your mind, inside and out, you find it very difficult to get really attracted to it. If you're feeling lazy, you can start thinking about death. As I said earlier, we have no idea how much longer we're going to survive. So we've only got this opportunity right now is for the opportunity that's for sure, so take advantage of it. These are ways of thinking that help get you directed back. It's part of using your powers of intelligence. Your powers of ingenuity. To see what works to bring the mind to the present moment. Once you've got it back to the present moment, then you can focus on the breath again. Treat the breath, breath as home base, and other topics simply as auxiliaries. And you find when you've got all these qualities together, the desire to meditate, your persistence, intentness, the powers of ingenuity, you find that the meditation grows, it develops. It starts showing results. Notice that the desire does have a role in this. Sometimes people say when you meditate you shouldn't have any desire, just sort of be in the present moment and allow whatever comes up to come and don't have any idea of a progress at all. The Buddha never taught meditation that way. The whole point of the, the practice is that it is a path, it goes someplace. Now that someplace is into the present moment. But there is progress. And desire does have a role, as do all the other qualities, intentness, persistence, ingenuity, the mind's ability to see what works and what doesn't work. It's simply a matter of learning how to use these mental qualities in a way that's helpful, like desire. We all focus on the goals that we want in our meditation, and then we run into the problem that our desire gets in the way. Well, the solution is not to drop the desire, it's to learn how to focus the desire in a way that's more useful. Focus on the causes that are going to get you there. Think of yourself as going to a mountain on the horizon. You're driving along. If you spend all your time focusing on the mountain, you're going to go drive off the road. So what do you do? You stay focused on the road. Every now and then you glance up to make sure that you're headed in the direction of the mountain and haven't turned around to head the other direction. But your main focus should be on what you're doing right now. Once you focus your desire there, make your desire to be more mindful, more alert. Not in a general sense, but more mindful right now, more alert right now. And then the next moment, and then the next moment, try to focus your desire on making it continuous. As we said, it's not the problem of getting in position, it's the problem of staying in position that you've got to work with here. And you do that by being more mindful of the breath, more alert to the breath, more continually. 
Once you focus your desire properly, then it becomes an aid to the meditation and not an obstacle. The same goes with the other qualities. Sometimes you can push, push, push so hard that it gets in the way of any kind of progress. So you step back. and Then it doesn't become a matter of not pushing. You just learn where to push, what things to push, what things to let be. In other words, you take these qualities and you learn how to make them aids in the meditation. Desire, persistence, intentness, ingenuity. Sometimes ingenuity, your thinking processes can get carried away as you get very analytical about things. Well, step back and say, be ingenious about what you're doing right now. Analyze what you're doing right now, what the results are. Don't go beyond what's happening right now, what you're doing right now. That way these qualities become focused and they become a part of the, the meditation. The, the Buddhist term for them, itibhata, literally means basis for success. We don't like to think of success in terms of meditation, but it's an important quality to think about. When you approach it skillfully, you do get results. That's the whole point. So as you focus on the breath and you find that either your desire to be with the breath is flagging or you're not being as consistently persistent, breath after breath after breath, or you're not really paying attention, you're just going through the motions, or you're not using your analytical powers to see what's wrong, what can be changed if something has to be changed or see where you're trying to push change too much. Once you've got these qualities working together on the meditation, you find that there will be progress. There's no two ways about it. In fact, in Thailand they like to take these qualities as a list of how you progress in anything, how you succeed in anything. You want to have the desire. You want to be persistent. Be intent. Use your powers of analysis and ingenuity. If you apply those qualities to any task, you're going to succeed. And what do you succeed in here? You succeed in the meditation in getting rid of suffering that you've been causing yourself unnecessarily. By developing more alertness, by developing more mindfulness. With this simple process of focusing on the breath, being sensitive to the breath, explore the way the breath is moving in the present moment. All the good things in the mind build on this.